own mission statement for what he would like to see the team operate as. We might see Paul Aaron become their reserve driver, perhaps. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. People were dooming and glooming about the idea of Nikita Mazepin getting back on the grid. But I think he's no longer eligible for a super license or something. I think that's expired or something. You have to reapply. Anyway, I do feel like now that might be an opportunity for some former high-tech greats to come in and make a name for themselves if they couldn't get into F1 prior. And people have been talking about Alex Pelot getting onto the F1 grid. And that would be a little bit of a coup and a long time coming, it having not happened with McLaren. And of course, McLaren suing him for about $30 million for breach of contract or something like that because he's stuck with Chip Ganassi at IndyCar rather than going to them. And he does have two IndyCar championships as well. So he is a very storied driver. Him coming over to Formula One, it would probably interest people who are only watching IndyCar and not Formula One for maybe giving it an opportunity. Some of the American audience. And yes, I know. Alex Polo is from Spain. He is not American, but he is very well known in America. And yet I am also aware that he is not a spring chicken at this point. He is approaching 30. He will be definitely almost 30 by the time 2027 comes along. But I could see maybe a Paul Aaron and Alex Polo lineup eventually. That could be the ticket. Or maybe with Jack Doohan, perhaps, because the Alpine Academy is still there. It might become the High Tech Academy or something. That could be a pathway if Alpine chooses to divest itself entirely. But in regards to Pierre Gasly, it might actually be a bad thing, or it might not secure his super duper long term future. It might be in doubt should the team not kick on in 2026 under his leadership and making all the decisions that he made over the years. Pierre will need to look around the driver market for 2027 after many of his colleagues will know how well their chosen teams fared with the rule changes. And if Alpine hasn't been pressed by then, his stock in F1 will have been greatly impacted for the worse, and right now, he might have handed his arch nemesis Ocon an easy A. Because even though people are thinking that Haas is going to go downhill next year, that Ocon will completely destroy the team, he will eviscerate Oliver Behrman and tear him a new one, I think that realistically, that might have been the better choice than staying with Alpine, because put simply, Ayo Komatsu has done wonders with that team in such a short space of time, and he's even been able to convince the likes of Gene Haas to actually open up his wallet. Why is not open Gene's wallet and then just go BOOM! But that, that's dust, by the way. Oh, and yeah, uh, they probably listen to their drivers as well these days. Hmm, poor Pierre. And to find out why I think I do rate this lineup of Bearman and Ocon more than I would have thought initially, go and watch this video next because there are some very interesting choices here and it might prove dividends, unlike with Pierre. God, do I have to like... There are super hmm, how do I get back there like easily? That's not me playing entire room. I should learn that. I can probably debug to power box. Where is power box? Coordinate wise. Well, what if I do world to win PS B hop in a run though? It's, it's hard to do. I, okay, well, I, I, well, I, I keep yapping and then dying. This is a, this is a issue. Where's power box? Okay, wait. Power box would roughly be. Oh, I was close! I'm so good, actually. Never mind, take it back. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the best, actually. That's so close to what? <laughs> I was basing it off the jump trees. You could see the jump trees. I was just like making a mental image of the room relative to the jump trees. <laughs> 